Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another edition of You What? As always, I am Jace and I am joined by my very, 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 very good friend, Squeak. Hello. Um, do you know what I'm recording this? I'm not... Are we on eight now? Um, you know you're at a computer and you could have just let this out. I know, but then I just feel that you would have heard the clicking. Uh... Why? You never hear me click, do you? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Do you? Yeah, sometimes. But, okay, we'll, we'll go with... Hey, welcome to another edition of... You what? Uh, yeah, so Squeak, how has your week been, mate? I've started right. to call this segment Tales from the Wasteland because I feel like your week is going to be the same thing. It's number eight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. Right, see, you didn't hear me clicking. Um, My Tales from the Wasteland? Oh. I've not actually been on it that much in saying that. I've, I've, um, well, I've had quite a few, haven't I? Oh, you caved. You caved, didn't you? That's why there's no Tales on the Wasteland. Yeah. Tell the people what you've been playing. I don't want to. <laughs> Tell the people what you've been playing. Blackout. <laughs> <laughs> the boycott lasted all of a month, if that. Mm, yeah, it's not been that long. <laughs> Say so what's been going on? What's the highlights of the of your gaming week? Um, well, I I have been playing Fallout. I completed all the the stories, the three options that you got, mm. like the main main quest line, and I'm kind of disappointed with all of them. Okay. Because with with each one, it's not really a spoiler, because if you pick one, you've got to kill the other two off. Oh, yeah. okay. Is it like at the end of like uh, New Vegas where you pick like your Mr. House, you're the Legion, or you're the NCR? Is it that sort of situation again? Uh, yeah, but okay. it didn't just end that sort of thing. But um, I'm disappointed with that because it's that thing of I want more quests and with more people about, more quests will be about. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, I think especially as they've made it so that you know there's no level cap. Yeah. So you think they'd make it so that after the end game, there's more, rather than the end game being a limit on it. But it's a bit like how when GTA done it, didn't they? And then if you if you made the wrong choice, so I say wrong choice. If if you made a particular choice, then you wouldn't unlock missions that would be there if you didn't choose that choice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a bit of a bit of a shame that. Okay. Um. But so yeah, yeah, talking about Black Ops Three, <clears throat> did you see on Tesco the error that Tesco made uh, around Black Friday? Uh, they, yeah. They had put it up for nine pound. And obviously, it sold out in a matter of minutes, but Tesco did not um, honour their mistake. <clears throat> so, I mean, for me, I kind of feel that if if they have put something up for the wrong price and you have purchased it... That's their error. That yeah. You shouldn't be punished for their error. And <laughs> you say you shouldn't be punished. They're not exactly punishing us, are they? They, they they're are, just, kind they're of. Because out it's of the like, deal. my God, it's so cheap. And then they're like... No, <laughs> like in a booming, in a booming no. god voice. No, that's yeah, as deep as I can go. I think it's really bad that companies are able to do that because, say, for example, you put something on eBay, and then it, and you put it on for the wrong price and it gets sold straight away. Like you have to go through a lot of hoops to say that you are not going to sell the person the item for the the low ball price, yeah. and then you end up looking like the bad person. But Tesco, you know, these big companies. They can make a mistake. Somebody put it up for nine pound. Have a go at that person. Let let the people get it for nine pound. At least then yeah. you're you know you're getting in a load of sales. That's the thing. I mean, like, I don't know. I think they should have to because it's that thing of like, I don't know. Like you say, you'd have to sort of either honour it or go through a lot of effort. Whereas like, they just sort of go. Oh, we did it wrong. Yeah. Is your money back? I'll tell you why they're lucky as well. It's because obviously they deal in hard copies. They're able to do that. Yeah. If it was digital, they'd have been been... rinsed. Yeah. Because there would have been no, oh, it's sold out. It would have just been digital copy after digital copy. Just, yeah. But yeah, I just think it's really bad that they, that the companies are allowed to do that. I think it's out of order. 
Yeah, no, I hear that. Especially with, like, with all the Black Friday stuff that's been going on, I thought that it was just a, a bold Black Friday move. You know? Mm, yeah. But the thing is, like, really, if you was going to do that, I'd have been more likely to do it in a store than uh, online, because then you get yeah. people in, sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you... The thing is, right, you see how you've been playing with your Windows 10 on your um, Xbox? Yeah. And you've been doing the streaming. Like, there's mm-hmm. there's this guy. Well, what's his name? It was like his, his alias was like Twisted, I think it was. And he is currently developing an app so that you can remote play your PlayStation to PCs. The thing is, I think Sony... We'll probably come up with something eventually, because yeah, you know what you know what they're like. They're mm-hmm. sort of like kids and one up in each other. That's the thing, and that's the thing. So this guy has been developing it for quite a while, but Sony have confirmed that it's on its way. So okay, I yeah. feel quite I feel quite um bad for this guy because obviously he's. He's made an unofficial remote play software. He's been putting so much effort into it. Decided that the only way that he can put the time towards making this is to obviously not to not work. So in order to cover his living costs, he's charging six pound fifty for this application. That you know, it's not too expensive, I guess. But right. it's one of those where like he's done this, made all these plans, and then Sony, I think it's on the twenty seventh. Sony have said, yeah, there's an app on its way. So what, Sony's going to give it away for free? This guy's like, I guess he's not Sony, so he doesn't really have grounds to be like, oh, that's mine. Well, the thing is, to be quite honest with you, he really should have had the foresight and seen this coming. Hmm. But it's one of those where, like, there was nothing being... So there's nothing being... There was nothing being said until he'd produced it. So it's one of those things where, like, you know, I can't remember who said it, but one of them said that... um, He'll take some comfort from the fact that his project probably forced Sony's hand. Because Sony probably did have a plan to have it later on. Because they, you know, PS3 to PSP, and I'm sure if PS Vita to PS4, you were able to yeah. to do stuff like that. But I just I just feel really bad for this guy that is obviously saw saw something. There's no there's no news of it coming out. So he's like, right, I'm going to put time in and effort. I've almost got this. I'm going to announce that I've got this. Say to people, right, I need the I need donations in a way to live so that I can produce this. And then Sony have gone, oh, you don't need to worry about this guy. We've got it. It's fine. It's the, fine. The, th- the thing is, like I say, he should have had the foresight. Because were, were Microsoft to like, ah, oh, stream your Xbox game to your PC, hmm. really easy. Sony are going to come out with something. I mean, all you got to do, um, like, even the other way around, like, um, Sony put in the headphone jack in the pads. Now Microsoft do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, the backwards compatibility. That, like... I don't know how far each one of them planned it, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. regardless of that, if one does it, it sort of forces the other one's hand anyway because they're like, oh, they've got this. That's quite a good idea. Let's just take it. See, that's sort of the thing that happened when it was like um, Xbox 360, uh, the Wii, and PlayStation 3. In a sense, that Xbox 360 came out, and then the Wii came out, and then... The, the PlayStation 3 tend to... Like, it seemed to take stuff from both consoles, didn't it? So it had, like, yeah. the pad that had the movement in it. Then they had, like, the basic the basic Wiimote. Sort they of sort design. of had the triggers almost, but yeah. then... There was garbage triggers. That's the thing. I feel like last year, Sony rushed out their console. Not yeah. last year, sorry. Last console. Last cycle, they rushed their console out. And I think this year, they're doing a lot better because they've actually taken the time to prepare. Because the PlayStation got pushed back, and then suddenly it was just released. And then, yeah... You know, when you look at the times it used to take to to update your games, you know, when you get a game that's a few years old and all the updates and how long that would take. Uh, the updates. Was ridiculous. And I mean, it's annoying because now all consoles take their time to update. It isn't as quick as 360 was. Yeah. The, w- the weird thing is now is the whole, like, I know on PC you've always installed your games and stuff, but it's just kind of weird on Xbox that if you buy a disc, you have to install it. Yeah. Uh, like I don't know what it is on PlayStation. Like as much as I've got one, I've I've never really. That's the thing. But this is it. this is an issue now. Whereas in a couple of generations, like of console generations, um, it won't it'll, it'll just be forgotten. Because if you think think about when you were little, when you played, you you put a cartridge in and it played. Like there was no load time. Yeah. And then PlayStation came out and you had your discs and then yeah, then you had a load time, and it wasn't that bad. 
but at the time it was like oh gotta wait for a loading screen and then obviously 360 came out and it was like oh we can install our games and it reduces the load time yeah yeah but yeah no it's it's just quite cool how how everything's going forward and it just it, it'll be really interesting to see obviously like when i said last week about um sky q and having their ability to have your media across various mediums so from your tv to your tablet to your pc you can pause on one thing play on another thing and continue and it'd be interesting to see it sounds like that's kind of the way that the games are going yeah yeah you know it's like oh will it get to a point where so it says that um sony have confirmed it will be for pc and mac so does that mean that they'll end up being like an iOS app so you can use your uh, tablet on Android or on iOS to be a remote screen? Yeah, that would be quite be. interesting. Yeah. And, you know, Wii's already doing that with their Wii U controller. But that's a that's the yeah, thing. Yeah. I feel like Nintendo come up with these really cool ideas and then and then Sony and Microsoft take it and and kind of twist it a little bit and modify it. And then they bring out something, obviously, that's, that's better. Because I still haven't played on a Wii U. I know my brother's got one. I still haven't played it. But okay. it's one of those where, you know, there's times where people want to watch something on the TV and you'd be like, okay, that's cool. You have the TV. And you're just playing on the on the Wii U there, you know? So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's um, quite interesting. It, it'll be that point where you see people walking into the toilet with, like, the iPad and a, a PS4 controller. Yeah. And it's like... <laughs> that's the thing. They used to have... There is a, there is a thing, I'm sure, because... Who had one? I feel like somebody I used to work with had one. Where, like, there was, like, a... You could use your PlayStation pad with your phone. And there okay, was, like, yeah. a bracket that you put on your pad that, like, held your phone. So yeah, you know, yeah. Just, like, portable. Yeah, it'll get to that point, won't it? Yeah, just yeah, with, yeah. The, with the house just being connected all via Wi-Fi. Once you've got a central thing. hub, you can go and, wherever. And as soon as your internet goes, or your router breaks, you're naked. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite mad. I seen I seen a picture of like this um I can't remember where it was. It was just this like cafe or whatever abroad. And then they said on there it said on the thing like we have no Wi Fi. Why don't you treat it like nineteen ninety five and actually speak to people? Oh wow. I was like, Yeah, actually that is the way that it's got. It's just when had a had a training course on Friday and we're doing the training course and you know, the the person speaking going for it all. So like, okay, we'll have a quick break. It's like, okay. Then what did we all do? All seven of us. Reached into our pockets, pulled out our phones, and was just going for our phones quickly. It's just a norm now, just, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's weird. It's so weird how how much stuff has changed, and that's why it will become a thing where it will just be the norm to, you know, oh the TV can't be used, I'll just play it on something else. Whereas back yeah. in the day, it was one TV, and like you know, you'd have one TV for the whole house. Then we graduate to having TVs in our bedrooms. But like for me, I had to share the console with my old man, so the console was in the front room. I didn't get to have it in my bedroom, and then when I did move it into my bedroom. He would just sit in my bedroom playing on the console all the time. So I was still at a loss. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, yeah. yeah. Kids these days, they don't know yeah. they've got it made. Right. That's the thing. It's just, yeah. It's uh, times change. <laughs> Things like that. So it feels really old to say that. Times change. <laughs> but, God, I'm oh. not even old. No, it, is, it is really mad looking back. Kids at... don't even know about burning cartridges these days. No, no, that's the thing. It's really weird. It's like... My kids, my kids would do it if something isn't working on the DS, which I find quite funny because they must have seen me do it, so so it's still instilled into them. But it's just one of them things where, yeah, just having a controller that had up, down, left, right, A, B, start, select. Will it get to a point where people don't know what CDs are? <gasps> the thing yes. is, I think whilst we have discs, they they will, but I can see it. I don't know when the leap will happen, because as a human, we like to have, you know, although digital is doing quite well, we like to have something physical. That's the thing, yeah. yeah. And I just think, I don't know who will be able to do that, but I, I you know, I imagine one day, because think, when, obviously we've got loads of streaming stuff now, but like Napster was the person that started to really push on, on the digital market back in the day, everybody yeah. had Napster. Or, or if uh, he was cool... Kazar. Yeah, but Kazar was um was P to P, wasn't it? Like yeah. Napster was just like what kind of Spotify is now. You'd put in the song and it'd be able to play it. And there was another one. It was like WinMX or something like that. Was one that people used. I'd rather just rob the song. <laughs> to be honest, <sighs> I I will promote piracy. <laughs> like, no, piracy is not a crime. It's a way of life. Arr. Exactly. Hardy horror. 
Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Wasn't you? Wasn't your dad like a quarter pirate? Uh, Not like yeah. he's twenty five percent of a person that's dressed like a pirate. Like wasn't one just, of his parents half just pirate? A, just a wooden leg. He's <laughs> <laughs> quarter pirate. I'm sure um, your dad used to call you a scurvy, a scurvy sea hog or something like that, didn't he? Used to. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That that is exactly right. My dad is a pirate. You scurvy cur. <laughs> he has cutlasses, parrots. Got parrots for days. Parrots for days. Parrots for days. Wow. Just takes them off the shelf. Makes a match. <laughs> Depends on the outfit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the breed of parrot. <laughs> <See>. <laughs> um. Have you have you seen his old squeak? I've, I did message you, but I don't know if you looked into it. That like there's been a leak for um, the iPhone 7's design um, of Apple removing the 3.5 millimeter jack. No, I didn't see that. So for those that aren't aware of what a 3.5 millimeter jack is, which would surprise me, it's what your headphones go into on pretty much every single audio uh, emitting device you have. Um, you say you say what surprises you. Beans messaged me the other day asking what a 3.5 millimeter jack is. I was like, really? Did she actually? Yeah. Shocking. It's just headphones. Shocking. Headphones. And the thing is, I really wanted to get her on here as as a guest, but mm, no, it's not happening. I can't have somebody on here that doesn't know what a 3.5 millimeter jack is. It's just. I mean, it's an everyday. I thing. don't know if you can hear the wind. But I am shaking my head right now. Eyes are closed. Head left to right. That is... But, yeah. It's it's one of those things where people have... Uh, somebody has leaked these details. So it's rumour and it's not confirmed. But where they've um got the, the lightning socket now... Obviously, they had the wider thing for charging. Now it's smaller. Apparently, they're thinking... The, the thought is to remove the 3.5mm jack. So they can make the phone, get this, 1mm thinner. Big whoop. <laughs> I, I think that's stupid. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? And and yeah, where they'll use the port that you use to charge will then become the port for the headphones. But it's just one of those things where it's really it's just a ploy so that people, if you have an Apple device, you have, you to, have buy. to buy Apple headphones. But yeah. stuff like Bluetooth headsets and headphones will still work. So it makes no difference to those that use Bluetooth stuff. But yeah, it's just it's yeah it's a bit it's a bit sly. Hmm. So, I don't know, like, hey, you got to buy our headphones now. But this is you the thing, you've got go to think, buy... is if they, if they do this, and it does well... Other then, people will get yeah, ideas. Yeah, so it's going to start happening with Android, isn't it? Like, Samsung is going to... But this is the thing, so with, with all... So obviously it's pretty much, Apple's on one uh, system, and everybody else is on Android, pretty much. Like, I know there are a few other softwares that some people use. Like, I know you got Windows. But my question is, is would... <clears throat> do you think that, like, LG, Samsung, uh, Sony Ericsson, whoever, do you think that they would each have the see, same alternate to a 3.5 or would they all have their own? See, this is the thing. I don't think they would do it. Because Android's supposed to be about, like, ease of use and stuff, isn't mm. it, really? Like, ease of access and that. And really... Headphones are everywhere. Like the 3.5 millimeter jack, I reckon no one would do it because it's the the case of, oh your your phone doesn't have that, so people will just go, you know, I'll go for a different phone that has the exact same system, but That's a headphone thing. jack. Because for me, like I've been I've been saying it a lot recently. I've been on Apple for for ages since like the uh, iPhone 3G. I was on that for ages. Then I came off for a bit and was on BlackBerry. Didn't like it. Went back to the iPhone. Then I think I had the Galaxy S3. Didn't really like it, mainly because of like the size and stuff like that. But now looking at like the iPhone 6 and the iPhone uh, 6 Plus, they're a big handset, so it's kind of like, oh, I might as well just tr- go to an Android phone then, like the Samsung Galaxy Edge or whatever. But then now that they're taking away this headphone jack, it sounds silly, but that now pushes me even more to be like, Do you know, what? I'm I'm kind of done with Apple. I think. Well, it's it's that thing, like I say as well, where Android is all, it's all the same system, it's just different phones. Yeah. Like, it's that thing of, to me, when I see phones now, I don't, I mean, I sort of care which one I 
I pick up. But I don't care to a point where it's like, oh, I would never go with them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just because it's a case of you can pick up um, an unlocked Android phone off Amazon for like 30 quid. Do you know what I mean? If you, okay? If you, there was a lot of pause to... in there. I know, I know. I don't know. I couldn't think of what I wanted to say. Hey, <laughs> don't you point that out. <laughs> My brain broke for a minute. <laughs> like, well, he was on those where it's like, hold on, is there, is there a delay? Is he is he lagging? Hello? I I was like looking at everything, trying to figure out the words. Like, <laughs> like looking around my room, like, that's a wall. It's a TV. Ah, oh, love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, such a ball back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I forgot what I was even on about now. See? Ah, oh, this is what you've done. Throw me off the trail of thought with my pauses. With your pauses, it was it was really odd. No, what, but what I'm saying is basically like that the actual phones with Android systems don't really matter hmm. that much anymore, Un- unless you're like looking specifically for say screen sizes, things like that. Yeah. Like, but then there's you can just get any old phone out there. Do, do you? Like, it'll have the same system. So what's it matter? Whereas like, so so in essence, that's why they couldn't get rid of the three point five jack. Because because that like, if if they was to do it, say Samsung went, we're gonna get rid of the the headphone jack. Hmm. It'd be a case of people would go, well, I kind of want headphones. Just do you know what I mean? Yeah, and there's loads of other things that obviously offer Android, so just go with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I can I can see that. It's just the problem is is that Apple are able to do things because. Like I, like I said, I own Apple devices. I have, I have an iPhone, I have an iPad, but I don't have like a, a Mac. I don't have a MacBook or anything like that. But some people are so Apple focused that whatever Apple say, they'll go for. Yeah, no, I hear that. Like when you see them idiots queuing up outside for a new phone, and if you're one of them people that is listening to this right now, you're an idiot. Don't even try like justify your reasons for camping outside of a store for a phone. The, Dick. I just, especially in this day and age, when you can go online and pre-order it. That's right. I'm insulting all those people. All those people that you see like on on the news, and it's like, oh my god, I got my phone, and they open it up, and then they drop it. Good, <laughs> good. I'm glad you had a four-hour wait to drop your phone. Some people are such hypocrites, because don't you like queue outside, or didn't you used to queue outside for like a midnight release of games? No. Are you sure? I got dragged there by other people. <laughs> <laughs> See, give it the big one. <laughs> Hypocrite. Know what, though? know what, though, yeah? The difference is, yeah, I can go anywhere. Like, I could have gone the day after. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. For, for a game. I can order it online. I can download it now. But if you're going, like, like just... It is for... ridiculous. And the thing is, it's not really product-focused. Like... Fair enough, it's for that specific thing, but it's not in a sense of like, oh my god, I'm going to be the first person to get this phone, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let, let me show it off and be a flashy cunt. <laughs> do you know, we were doing really well, I wasn't going to say anything, we were doing really well without having curses in here. I was going to be able to put this out as a non-explicit episode and you go and drop the C-bomb. Well, th- Can't they Can't take are, you man. anywhere. They do my head in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So moving moving into the next segment, I I noticed something whilst uh, chasing the internet. Metal Gear Solid Five's hidden objective to remove all of the nukes in their multiplayer mode. Did you play the multiplayer mode at all? No, I didn't touch it. I just played hours and hours worth of the single Didn't player. You? Well, from from what I can deduce, there's a there's a mode where everybody has sort of like their bases, and your bases can be attacked and destroyed. But everybody has these defenses, and one of the things that you can build as a defense is a nuke. So people were were saying that there must be some sort of hidden objective in. Somebody found a video file that's like eight minutes long, that kind of goes through the whole world being nucleus. Once that came out, somebody at Konami, I don't know if it was Hideo, but yeah, somebody uh, um somebody at Konami said, like, confirmed that, yeah, there is a mission, like, that the way to complete it is to remove all nukes from the game. And then they started to have, like, a live count of um of how many nukes are left in the game. But it's one of those things where 
since they've said it, there was a massive drop at the beginning. But it's got to be on all platforms. So it's not like, oh, if everybody does it on PlayStation, then it happens on PlayStation. Uh, okay. Like, everybody on every platform. PlayStation 4, 3, Xbox One, 360, and Steam. Yeah, that's um, a lot. And it's one of those things where, like, the numbers dropped quite a bit. So, you know, PlayStation... So PlayStation in total, PlayStation 4 and 3, it had about 4,000 nukes on the 1st of November. 25th of November, it went down to 600. Yeah? Xbox had roughly 1,500 nukes. That's 360 and 1. It's gone down to about 180. Yeah? Steam (laughs) went from 36,000 nukes to 15,000. Yeah? But they think that that's in part to people obviously playing it for a bit and getting fed up. And yeah, then, yeah. Since there's been the announcement that, yeah, it's confirmed to get rid of these nukes, the numbers have started to fluctuate and go back up again. Because you've got people, that, the trolls that live on the yeah, internet, have yeah. decided, oh, there's a there's a world objective to get rid of these? We Let me build some more. Plan. So, yeah, it's one of those as well where it's, it's, it has to be all nukes removed from every console and every server. So, I mean, I don't know what the servers are like. So, if we jumped on, could we be on the same server as somebody in in Asia? Can we be, or would we just be put into the European servers? That's another interesting thing. That's the thing. I don't know. Where where I've not even I've not even touched the online, to be honest with you. Um, Because I wonder if there's a tactical unit of men that have got together and gone, right, lads, we're going to do this, and then they keep sharing like different like IP addresses and DNS so that they can join the different uh, continents. I mean, and I bet you there'll be like splinter groups out there. There'll be like terrorist groups. Like, oh, we're just going to build all the nukes. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, <my laughs> nukes. I imagine that's how they call themselves as Cobra. Well. Yeah, and they'll just like have the the Burns hands. Like, just <laughs> excellent. <laughs> oh. So that's cool. Um. So I just I love I love stuff like that though because what was that other game called? There was a game that was on Steam and it was like once everybody has died, the game's finished. Like stuff like that. I just love when they do something on such a grand scale. That idea obviously limits their game that once everybody's dead, the game finishes. Like I feel yeah. that's more of an artistic thing than than it being like you know you want your game to have longevity. But that's, that's the thing. Do you do you go for something? It's like um what was that game that Peter uh, Mullen you did? He where you had the cubes yeah. and you had to remove the cubes. And only one person got to see what was on the inside and it was up to yeah. them what they'd done with that information. Stuff like that. I I find it really good when they have like a the whole world has to do something. What was it on there's they've done stuff as well where the community have to get so many kills or whatever to unlock the next thing. Yeah. It's like stuff that like that. Done something like that. Yeah. I I love it when they do stuff like that because yeah, it just kind of even though you don't talk to people, everybody's working towards the same thing. Everybody's on trying to get their kills up so that we can all meet this 10 million kill mark. Sometimes it's unintentional weapons. though, isn't it? Because like you're sort of forced to take part in it. Mm. Like You can't really opt out and go, no, I don't want my <laughs> kills to go towards this counter. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I hear that. So yeah, so that's, that's a pretty cool idea, I feel, by Konami. And I feel like more people... I love, you know... We keep mentioning Fallout. I love how they have loads of Easter eggs. I love how Konami uh, have put quite a few in across their games. And I feel more people could do <clears throat> do with having more things. So, like the Megalodon when it was in Battlefield. It was like a rumour for ages. And then they released that map. Yeah. And then we got next to that boy and there was a massive... Just silly stuff like that. It's really cool. And I think you guys have been doing it on Zombies, haven't you? Like, haven't you guys... I've heard you guys trying to get organised with flutes and... Well, stuff in a certain order. Is that Easter eggs or is that just part of it? I haven't played it. It's so. uh, it's Easter eggs in it. Um, but it's it's that thing of uh, you know the tweet that you was like, ah, oh, you're like this, and it was the one saying Black Ops servers are shit and this and that. Yeah, they are. Um, because it's yeah, we got like so far and it just kicked us out. It's like brilliant. Oh, what like, like even so, the four of you playing a private game. Yeah. It kicked you out. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's shocking. It's, uh, it's a bit shit. There he goes. The, 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 g- the game in itself is... Uh, I, I really got it for zombies. Okay. Like, I played a little bit of the, the multiplayer online, and yeah, it's, it's, it's Call of Duty. It was, it was enjoyable. It, I didn't mind it. That's the thing. I was like, the other day, I was like, I think I'm enjoying myself. Like, <laughs> I, I was that shocked. I said it out loud. I was like, <laughs> I think I'm enjoying myself. And then, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> the day after, I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck this game. Shit, like if you have quality, you knew I was right. Exactly. What were you? Weren't you on something stupid? Because I was trying to talk to you, and you were on like one in seventeen. And then you just like just kick it off. <laughs> yeah. It's like oh, one in eighteen. Spawning and dying. <laughs> the thing is, the videos I've seen quite a few videos of people just absolutely raping spawns. On the, there. The thing is, the thing that annoys me is the spawns on it. Like they're not like Modern Warfare or Modern Warfare Two, where you could get spawn trapped. And you'd actually have to work as a team to get out of it and mm. deal with it. It's like they've just babied people and gone like, we'll just spawn you wherever the fuck you like, away from where you're going to be shot. But I then at, this, at the same time, it almost spawns you in a position close enough for you to sort of take revenge on the person that has just shot you. Yeah. There, there was one video of a guy that started, the game started, done a countdown. Then he literally ran backwards around this van. And then the whole team, the whole uh, enemy team, had already ran forward around him, and he just like shot them from the back and took like five or six of them out. And it was just, I was like, well, yeah. that's a bit, that's a bit weak for it to have started, and to put him there is a bit of a, a sham, if I'm honest, sham. Yeah, it's it's an outrage. It's really, it is quite shit. They need to, they need to fix up the spawns. Like, like I say, you used to be able to get spawn trapped, and they did it so that that would stop. But at least when you got spawn trapped, you'd have to work your way out of it. Like, yeah. you'd have to sort of live the like battlefield metro. You know, a few of you would have to run round one side, and then it would yeah. allow everybody else to get out. Yeah, you, stuff you, like that. You, le- you like learn the tactic, and if you don't, you stay shit. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's like I said to you, like. The other day, the the perks on it sort of pissed me off because it's like people sound whore on the game as it is. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, but then to go like, oh, everybody sounds whores on this game. Let's give them a perk from the start to make them sound whore better. Like, it's just stupid. Yeah. 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 You don't get dead silence from the start to counter it. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, I didn't oh, think about that. like everybody run around with your elephant fucking shoes. Let's think because there was. I've seen like with the perks they split up. You know, back in the day when you used to have cold blood in it, done it all. Like they've they've taken that out and they've sort of split up, haven't they? So there's one to protect you, so the air air streaks can't see you. One ground streaks can't see you. One's for like UAV. Yeah. There's one for your exosuit or whatever it's called. Uh, but you get one of them from the beginning. And I feel like I remember being on you know back in the day duties, and it's like I can't wait to get to level thirty something yeah. so that I can hide under the radar. The, the thing that gets me as well, yeah, is, like you say, they've split them all up, mm. but they have less perks. Yeah. I, d- I don't understand how that works. <laughs> it's really like, weird. Like, when you have, like, look at, if you look at Modern Warfare, that was, like, the brand new thing. It just come out. Perks, shoot through walls and stuff. Modern Warfare 2 was, like, we'll give you more, more kill streaks, things like that, more attachments. And then from there, it just sort of went downhill because it was sort of like, we'll wash everything out to say we've got new stuff. But really, it's like if I was to wear a black top and then I bleach it and then I go, oh, it's new. It's brand new top. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's not really. It's just washed out. Like We're talking about games centered around um, around weapons and killing and guns and powerness. Um. At Retro Joe, he asked a question on Twitter, and I, w- I'm, I wonder what your answer is. So, his favourite weapon in all of gaming is the Doom Shotgun. What's yours, Squeak? My favourite weapon in all of gaming? Yeah. I don't even know. There's so many weapons. But what was the first thing, what was the first weapon you thought of then? Because you obviously had one where you started, and then you started to think of other weapons. What was the first one that came to mind? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I thought of some, like... Ah... Uh... Come on. I can't. I can't even remember why it's like off though. It's like a black hole gun. Okay, but you don't know the game that it was from. Yeah, I can't remember. So I thought you'd be like a like the Barrett fifty cal. I I did like the the fifty cal on on the old Call of Duty like mm-hmm. Modern Warfare where you work your way up to it, you'd finally unlock it, and then it just had that massive like like boom to it. Yeah. It was like really like this is some heavy duty shit. See, see, my answer to to his question was the the G three from COD four. I used to love hardcore mode with that, pigging somebody's head, 
it used to be so satisfying because it was a one pop it was so accurate you just kind of had to get it like and i think that was my favorite gun of all time i like some of the suggestions other people had because some people were mentioning like um uh the loads of ratchet and clank weapons were mentioned yeah they was always interesting they had, yeah those different ones but somebody said about the crowbar from half-life as you can get out of any situation the mini nuke the mini nuke mini nuke fallout yeah because everybody loves having that power even if someone's standing like two foot in front of you and you've got that gun out i will shoot it like i know it's gonna kill me but it's the whole it's the explosion and the light okay. and the mushroom cloud and the whole like yes there have been a few I was gonna say, there's been a few um mentions of the fat man as a, as a favorite weapon yeah uh, somebody was saying about the, a buster sword, any buster sword. Okay. Um, the double moonraker lasers in GoldenEye 007, because pew pew, that's from Tetris Droid. I'd say some of the weapons from uh, Castle Crashers. Okay, yeah. Um, somebody somebody said that they couldn't believe they forgot about the their favorite weapon came from GTA San Andreas, the the purple dildo. That's their favorite okay. weapon. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so, it's, it's so, crazy looking through this list. Like the laptop guns, people said about Perfect Dark's laptop guns. There have been a load of weapons when you think about it over the years, man. Yeah, and the thing is, like, you know, most of the time you just sort of think of, like, the realistic sort of weapons. You know yeah. what I mean? But when you, like, look into games and that, like like you say, like Ratchet and Clank, there was so many just odd weapons. Yeah, they could just, that just all sorts. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, so moving into our WhatsApp of the week, I've been playing a game called Headshot Heroes. Now it's a it's a football game, surprisingly. I know you were expecting that from the title Headshot Heroes. No, it wasn't actually. It's made by your favorite company, EA. EA no. with Chilingo. But yeah, I was playing it, and it's just it's a really simple really simple game to play, but at the same time it's easy to make a mistake. And once you make a mistake, it goes over and you start again. So you pick a team, and so it starts off where you have two players in front of you. One player is your team, the other player is not. So say, for example, we picked Snowmen as our team, and we're playing against monsters. The Snowman would have the ball. We see two players in front of us, and the time at the top is ticking. You have to pick either the player to the left or the player to the right. Then you keep passing. Once you get up to the goal, you take a shot. A power bar is going up and down, up and down. So you have to shoot to the right side of the goal that's not being blocked by the wall of players. If you mm -hmm. get the power up high enough and hit it when the goalkeeper's in the way, you, you kill him and take his head off. Really? Yeah. And as you do that, once you finish it, you get extra seconds for a headshot or seconds added on for a perfect shot, and then it goes on to the next round. And then, so the first round, say you only have to do five passes and you take a shot. The next round's like seven passes and take a shot, nine passes and take a shot as you, as you go through. And the further you get, the more coins you get. The more coins you get, the more that you can upgrade your player so that you can earn more coins or earn more time to get further. As you go further, you earn a lot of new characters. And yeah, it's, it's one of those games where you can just sit there on the bus and play it. Like, it doesn't take a lot of concentration. But it's one of those where, like, you know, almost like in the way that when you play Temple Run, when you're playing um, Headshot Heroes, when you get really far one mistake and then you're just really annoyed with yourself because it was so simple you know okay yeah like yeah it's, it's obvious yeah. which of your players you're supposed to pass it to but you just press the wrong direction because you're trying to do it as quick as you can yeah and then yeah you start all the way back to level one and do it again so yes yeah, it's, it's all right it's good it's a nice simple game um it's it's 8-bit graphics i think it's 8-bit it's quite colorful um i mean it might it might be 16-bit okay. in, in regards to color but um yeah, it's definitely well worth a look at. It's it's so simple and it's free. Uh, the game gives you the option of, when it comes to advertisements, it gives you the option. It'll say, like, oh, do you want to watch this video and have no adverts for 10 minutes? Or do you want to enable apps, uh, enable adverts? So every so many goes, like a poster will come up, if you will, and you just click the X. So I thought that was pretty cool. You could pay £2 to get rid of all the ads. But I thought it was an interesting way of doing it, rather than, yeah, yeah. you know, you've got the option. Oh, I can watch this 30-second video, then I won't get adverts for 10 minutes. Rather than sort of forcing... yeah. So it's cool. I mean, I would, I would give this, I'd give this one three watts out of um out of five, mainly because once you played it for a little while, like I said, it's a simple little game, but once you played it for a while, it is just really samey. Okay. There's not yeah. really much to it. You you unlock more teams. But sort of when you're done, you're done. Yeah. Sort of the thing. teams don't do anything different. You're still passing, pass, pass, and taking a shot at the end. It's not like one of them slows down the shot bar or one of them has this curved kick. There's nothing like that. It's the same thing. 
It's okay. just that depending on what team you pick, like you know their colours are more obvious. So if you picked a, a team that's like got red heads, then you can see visually straight away that's a red head, that's a red head, that's a red head. Whereas some okay. of them are very similar. If you pick somebody with brown hair, there's like three or four teams that have people with brown hair. So then yeah, so, okay, I get so, so you just pick your team based on hair colour? Is that what you're I'm saying? I'm just saying right you now? try and pick them so that they're the most obvious difference in colour. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we're going to go into to the final part of the week. Squeak. What part are we on? It's your favourite part. You love shout, this bit. Shout outs. You say it really quiet though. Is that is that to be ironic on purpose? No, it's just I I, I don't have any shout outs, you know. Well, we at you what, and this does kind of include you. We we have a shout out. Yeah. To be fair, I I see. So I, I won't make you. I won't I make did, you say I, it. I did actually read the run sheet. Yeah, I won't make you say it, but yeah, I mean, 30th of November, today, it is a big day because our brother from another mother, our our confidant from another bumpy font, Kinney, he's 30. Kinney Killer from over at the Sunday Segway is 30. Happy birthday to you, bro. Um, By now, you'll, you'll have your present. I bought him a Marvel mug and some other little bits, but yeah. You, you know what? If he... It, uh, if you've not give it to him by this like point tomorrow, well today, don't I've ruin just, the magic. I've I've just ruined <laughs> the magic for everyone. <laughs> oh well. No, he'll have it. He'll but, have it by now. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, or you've just ruined his present. Big happy yeah. birthday to Kinney. You know he's the reason why he's the one that kind of pushed for us to to get into this podcast way of life. You know we're we're two months in. I mean, with the Sunday segue, they're well on to like two, three years now. They've been going every week. So, I mean, if you do, if you are into wrestling at all, um, check them out. Sunday segue wrestling. Their Twitter is at Sunday segue. Segue spell S E G U E. So go check them out, man. They're, you know, Kinney's Kinney's been making it take go to more and more heights. They're joining the network. Kinney might be starting his own network soon, so it'd be cool if you know if that does get started, if we were able to get involved in that. But yeah, big happy birthday to him. Um, is there anybody that you want to single out, Squeak, for a shout out? I yeah. I, I, I want to make sure I give you ample opportunity. So no. the day you crumble, I won't crumble. Mm, you won't crumble. I don't know. You're trying to fool, buddy. It just made me think of apple crumble now. <laughs> okay, so to allow him <laughs> to go and eat, I've been Jace. He's been Squeak. See you next week. Later. <laughs> <laughs>